Now, here's, here's the thing, guys. Um, two years ago, I was exactly where you guys are right now. You know, I was a, a person just like you sitting in the audience, okay, listening at all the uh, great speakers. And it's actually quite funny because two years ago, I was in this very same um, uh, hotel where you are right now. And it was a very, very big event, a couple of hundred people in the room. And, you know, I had that dream as well to think to myself, you know, uh, one day I want to be on the stage speaking. And, uh, you know, fast forward now, um, you know, I've, I've, I've had the opportunity and I've spoken all over the world. So here's the thing, guys. I want you to also give yourselves a round of applause for being here today, okay? Because it's very, very important. And here's the thing. There are, this, is, this place is where the magic happens, okay? There's loads of opportunities in this room as well. Not only with the speakers, but in this room, there's loads of opportunities. And there's an opportunity for you guys to make a loads of money doing joint ventures as well. So I'm going to take you guys through exactly how that works and, and what I do as well. So first of all, can I have a show of hands? Um, who knows uh, or who's actually um, uh, knows what a joint venture is? Excellent, so the majority of you. Okay, so who in this room has actually done a joint venture before? Cool. And how many of you people in here would like to learn how to do joint ventures? Excellent. Okay, so you're in the right place. Um, so what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to take you through step-by-step uh, step how to actually do joint ventures. And I'm going to be covering a lot of content, so take a lot of notes. And most of the content that I'm covering today is what I normally cover on my 10,000 uh, uh, pound brokering business program. I have a brokering business program I do around the world every quarter. I train a, a team of joint venture brokers and I'm actually gonna be sharing some of that content that I only share in my high level program. So you're gonna be getting some amazing content today and it's, it's, it's definitely gonna blow your mind. So first of all, uh, a br brief introduction to myself. How many of you have actually heard me speak before actually know who I am? Oh, only a few of you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Right, um, let me just give you a brief uh, background to myself so you understand who I am and, and why I'm here today speaking to you. Um, who's heard of a guy called Jay Abraham? Excellent, okay. Jay Abraham is a, a very big marketer in the US, actually one of the top marketers in the world who also talks on the same subject that I do, joint ventures. And Mark Goldman, one of his partners, uh, quoted me as a true rags to riches super success story, just like Andrew Carnegie. Um, who's heard of an internet marketer called Jeff Mills? Okay, brilliant. Jeff Mills, another good friend of mine, gave me the name The Master Connector. Uh, who's heard of Jonathan Jay? Guy from the UK, great marketer. I was uh, an expert, JV expert on one of his success track programs. Um, I've achieved over 10 million pounds using joint ventures and today I'm going to take you step by step through exactly how I've achieved that and how you can replicate that as well. Uh, I'm an international speaker charging £5,000 a, uh, a keynote speech, which is what I originally used to do before I started um, uh, doing platform speaking. Um, I was the first Brit ever to be invited to keynote speak about JVs at the Social Media Summit in the US. I do a lot of my, uh, a lot of my talking and speaking in the US and in the Middle East, and I'm very fortunate enough to have uh, friends like Stephanie who invite me into the UK at some of the big events to speak as well. Uh, I'm an author of an upcoming book called The Joint Venture Millionaire, and I'm the founder of uh, mybrokeringbusiness.com. Okay, so that's enough about me. Uh, let me take you through what I'm going to be covering today. Today I'm going to be covering uh, the real power of joint ventures. This for me has been a significant shift in everything that I do and has allowed me uh, to go from being a multimillionaire um, uh, where, and where I went, went from being a multimillionaire to being broke and coming back again. And I'll show you exactly how I did that and how you guys can actually replicate that step by step in this room. Um, I'm going to be covering how to find targeted joint venture partners because that's something that I get approached with all the time. I mean, uh, sitting in the back today, a couple of people came up to me and said, is anybody going to be talking about how to promote their book today? Is anybody going to be, be, be talking about how to use social media? So I'm going to be covering those two aspects in my presentation for you as well. Um, I'm going to be covering how to contact joint venture partners, the right way to contact joint venture partners to get them on board. I'm also going to cover why authors need joint ventures, and I've got some really, really cool case studies uh, that I'm going to cover with each of you in this room today. Um, creating six and seven jo joint ventures, and also using show social media for joint ventures as well. So let's begin, first of all. Joint ventures, uh, to me, is what I think and what I believe is one of the most powerful business strategies that you can use in anything, whether it's your business, whether you have a book that needs promoting. It's, a it's absolutely amazing and mind-blowing. So first of all, what is a joint venture? Well, a joint venture is basically um, an arrangement of mutual benefit between two or more people or businesses who have complementary resources. So I'll give, you an, I'll give you an example of how this works. Let's say, for example, you have a, and this is a classic example I give on joint ventures when I, when I speak. Let's say you have a bathroom uh, tile manufacturer and a bathroom suite manufacturer. 
they both sell different products and they're complementary products, but they're not competing with each other. But what you have is they have the same customer database, okay? So two of these companies can actually do joint ventures together and create more business. But here's the problem. Most companies see each other as competitors, okay? And, you know, when I speak around the world, I actually mention this, that, you know, people like myself, I'm a joint venture broker. When there's more than three people in a joint venture, the third person is known as a joint venture broker, and this is what I do. I bring people together, or I go out there and find uh, JV partners for whether it's authors, consultants, coaches, or whether it's companies. Most companies will not work with each other because they see each other as being competitive. That's where someone like myself, who is a joint venture broker, really does well as an independent consultant who comes in and puts companies together. Um, what do you think is a business's most valuable asset? Any ideas? Database. Anything else? People. Okay. Here's systems. Here's the thing. People normally say, who's heard of the term, the money is in the list? Okay. The money is actually in the relationship of the list. So, and I'll give you a classic example. I have a lot of friends who have massive lists, okay? But I have also have a lot of friends who have smaller lists. But because of the relationship they have with the smaller list, they tend to do more money on a regular basis. So it's actually the relationship that, uh, uh, that you have with your list which is the most valuable asset, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some stats with you as well. When a business is sold, that, va that value is, is at, that's the value that's added on the balance sheet. Now here's the thing, guys. Each of you in here, how many of you guys own a business in here? Okay, and how many of you guys are here to make as much money as you can from your business? Okay, now here's the thing, you also, when you create a business, okay, always have the outcome in mind in terms of where you want to take that business, okay? And one of the greatest things that you can develop is either a database uh, or loyalty in your, within your customers, that is very important when it comes to selling your business. So always make sure that you have an exit strategy when you're putting your business together, because that's one of the most important things you can create for your business. So here's some stats. It costs six times as much to sell to a new buyer. Now, we all know this, right? How many of you in here spend money on lead generation? Okay, I'm going to show you today how to basically uh, create leads without spending money, okay? And how to create sales without spending money on leads as well by using joint ventures. So we know it costs six times as much to sell to a new buyer. But selling to, selling to the same customer again is pure profit, okay? Pure profit, because once you've acquired that customer, if you resell to that customer, you've covered your costs and it's pure profit. Do you understand that, right? Okay, brilliant. But here's the thing, it costs you zero if you're using someone else's list, okay? Do you understand that concept? Okay, now that's the power of a joint venture, okay? Because most of the profit is yours and there's no advertising costs. So, you know, joint ventures is actually one of the most powerful marketing strategies that you can do bar none. I mean, social media is a godsend and it's an, am it's an amazing tool because it's free. But if you combine joint ventures with social media like I'm going to show you, it absolutely can create a phenomenal effect. So, let's look at some of the benefits of using joint ventures. Uh, joint ventures allow you to compensate weak areas in your business without the nominal investment. Now, one of the catch-22 uh, problems that most businesses have is that they can't expand because they don't have the workforce, sales team, they don't have money for a call center, for example. But going to another company who has an underutilizing asset that's not being used, like a workforce or a call center, it, in, in a joint venture is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Okay? It also allows you to take advantage of unlimited complementary skills and resources. Now, what this means is this. Once you've done one joint venture with one JV partner, guess what? You can take that same concept and campaign and do it again and again and again and again. This is a vital component in anyone who wants to become successful with their business or even becoming an author. It also allows you to boost your lead client generation and profits quickly. And I'll talk more about this, how I've used it and with my clients to actually create leads and create business just by using joint ventures. It also allows you great branding potential for free. Now, here's the thing. You know, you've heard everyone talk about becoming an expert. Andy Harrington, you've heard Mindy talk about becoming an expert. That's the main key in being, for example, where we are today. You know, earning the amount of money we do with our coaching programs, our, our books, our courses, and speaking on stage. We are positioned as experts, okay? And joint ventures will allow you to do that. And I'll show you step by step how anyone can become an expert very, very quickly by using the concept and power of joint ventures. It's absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing. I mean, two years ago, I was virtually unknown around the world. Now, you know, I'm one of the top three, four joint venture experts in the world simply because of my collaboration with other people in the field who I targeted, known as the key people of, who, who's heard of the term key people of influence? 
Okay, exactly. And I'll show you how to do that using joint ventures and using social media as well. Also, joint ventures, you know, this is the classic one. It allows you to make money out of thin air, and that is no joke. I'm going to take you step by step and show you exactly how I did that and how you guys can replicate that, you know, actually walking out this room tomorrow. Okay, here's the benefits of being a JV broker. Now, this is what I do. I'm a joint venture broker, and here's some of the benefits in terms of what I do, and, and it, it give you more of, an ex more of an insight into how I run my business and, and what I do. As a JV broker, I make lots of money by simply being a middleman, okay? Uh, I, I don't need to spend years building my customer list or even creating my own products. I used to run a business that had 25 employees that did over 10 million pounds, and I'll take you through exactly how I built that business using joint ventures, and I'll take you through exactly what I'm doing right now. Totally stress-free, allows me to travel the world, allows me to work from anywhere. Um, also, I don't need to keep track of sales, chase people for money owed or fulfill product orders. I don't do any of that. You know, I'm a joint venture broker, and the JV partners I work with on both sides, they do all the work. Um, all I do is just step in and leverage the resources around me and make huge profits by just bringing people together. Okay? Okay, so what I want to do with you guys, I, I want to share my, my personal story with you because I think it's very, very important. I want to share my uh, story of um, you know, how I got to become one of the top joint, joint venture experts in the world and how you guys can actually copy some of the techniques and some of the strategies that I've done. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So here I am in uh, 2006. Uh, I built a, a 10 million pound business using just joint ventures. You know, it was an amazing time for me. I had achieved everything I wanted in life. You know, when I was, when I, when I was a, little, uh, a little boy, sorry, I'll speak with a little bit of an American accent there because I speak so much in America. When I was a little boy, I wanted basically that shiny red Ferrari. I wanted to live in a beautiful Georgian mansion, you know, and I achieved all that. Achieved all that by 2006, you know, I built a 10 million pound business using just joint ventures. Okay, now I'm going to take you step by step how exactly how I did that and how you guys can copy that. But then in 2008, who remembers what happened in 2008? We had the recession, right? I lost everything. I lost everything and was totally broke. You know, it, 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 was, a, it was a very upsetting time for me and it was like, you know, you hear the stories of entrepreneurs going through this cycle. I actually, I actually physically went through this cycle. But then in 2009, I set myself a challenge to make a million pounds in 12 months and actually completed a million pound JV deal in 30 days. Now, how many of you in here would like to hear exactly how I did that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take you through step by step, exactly uh, share my story with you of where I've come from and how I've got to be one of the top JV experts in the world and sort of, sort of the things that I've done, the opportunities that I've looked at and you know, definitely get, write some notes down because you're going to have aha moments. Now, I'm going to give you a tip here. When you're listening to speakers on the stage, and bear in mind, I'm not a professionally trained speaker. I haven't been to Andy Harrington's program at all. I, 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 I speak more from the heart, and I just love speaking and connecting with people. Okay, that's my passion. Um, but when you see speakers on the stage, don't take notes on the slides. Don't basically take notes in terms of what you see. Take notes in terms of what you feel. Okay, that's the most important thing. It's your aha moments. Because in these presentations, you'll see from the speakers, I mean, they're all phenomenal speakers, and most of them are really, really good friends of mine. And, you know, the content that they're going to share is absolutely going to be mind-blowing. So when you make notes, make notes how that specifically is tailored to your outcome that you want, okay? Don't make notes specifically just, you know, I know some of you out there who just bring pads and pads with you, and you're, you know, you're scribbling away. Just, that's just a tip, because that's what I learned, and it really, really helped me. So, um, where do I begin? Okay, um, I originally trained as an accountant. You know, it was one of the things that, um, you know, coming from my culture, my background, my family wanted me to become either a doctor, accountant, solicitor, lawyer, astronaut. I couldn't get that far. So, I opted to go down uh, the route of, you know, trained to become an accountant. And here's the thing. When uh, I got a job with the top, one of the top five uh, consultancies in London, I didn't really enjoy it, to be honest with you. I was there for at least six, seven months, and... I spent most of my time helping other people, okay? How to use the internet, for example, or, you know, helping them how to use PCs and computers. And then uh, my supervisor turned around and said to me, so, hell, you know, you're really good at using computers and the internet. Have you considered doing something in that field? And I thought about it, and I thought, you know what? I don't really enjoy doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm more of a, uh, going out there and helping, helping people. So I left that job, and I decided to uh, study and do a course in uh, information technology, IT, with business. So while I, while I did that course, I wrote a thesis. How many of you guys in here have actually have, have written a thesis before? 
Okay, now you know the deal with theses, right? So I wrote this thesis, and uh, the, um, uh, the title was The Impact of the Internet on the Manufacturing Industry. Now, don't get too bored. I'm not going to get too academic on you. I'm just going to give you a background in terms of how you can create opportunities, okay? And how opportunities, when they come to you, you need, need to be able to see those opportunities and grab them with both hands. So I wrote a thesis uh, because back then, 96, 97, uh, the Internet first started, and you know, I, I did a lot of research on what is this thing called the Internet, okay? And um, I wrote this thesis uh, the, on the impact of the internet on the manufacturing industry because actually back then they were saying that the internet is going to have a big effect on the manufacturing industry and as we know today it has done. And little known to me, my professor posted my thesis online. Now here's the thing, if most of you remember, Google launched in 98 and before Google they had things called bulletin boards. Who remember bulletin boards? Uh, well, we're already showing our age now, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> and um, I started getting phone calls from companies, venture capital firms, dot-com companies, saying, look, we read your thesis uh, with great interest, and uh, you know, could you come out and talk to us about this thing called the Internet? So there I was, straight out of uh, uh, university uh, from my course, having graduated, now consulting with uh, dot-com companies, venture capital firms, and it was amazing. One of my first clients was a company called, who's heard of QVC? Okay, QVC.com was one of my first clients, and uh, it was amazing. 1998-99, we had clients lined up who were paying us between 25 and 40,000 pounds for internet consulting, which, it, which is basically what it was. it was. It was great. We had a great run then. Who remembers what happened in the year 2000? Okay, yeah, we had the dot-com bubble burst, and we also had... Y2K, exactly. And, you know, being computer consultants, we, were, we now had a bad name because guess what? We were blamed for Y2K. And plus, when the dot-com bubble burst, we lost the majority of our clients, okay? But at that time, this is what happened. When I used to go and see these companies, I created what I would call a showcase. It was a one-page website, which um, I created some computer training courses, PDF files, which people can go to the website, order a course, and download these PDFs in, in a zip folder, okay? Nowadays, you know, people are doing it, one-page websites. We were doing this, like, what, 10, 15 years ago. And the great thing with that business is, you know, uh, it, back then it was very easy to get onto Google, and we were making sales every day. Actually, every month we were making about four or 5,000 pounds a month on clockwork. But this, biz this little uh, computer training website is what I showed to businesses to prove Remember Andy talks about social proof, okay? Social proof that we, we knew what we were doing when it comes to making money online, okay? And then 2000, the bubble burst, we lost a majority of our clients, so we sat down and we thought, okay, what do we do right now? What do we do now? You know, the whole industry shift, um, we have to think about what we do moving forward. So we had this little website making us, you know, four or five thousand pounds a month, and we decided to concentrate on that little computer training website and create a business out of it. So early 2000, I came across a phenomenal book, which actually I forgot to bring with me today. I carry it wherever I go. And you might want to write this down. It's called Getting Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. It's a book by Jay Abraham. That book has been a phenomenal shift in the way I do marketing in my life. Uh, Getting Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. Phenomenal book by Jay Abraham. And while reading that book, uh, Jay spoke about something called joint ventures and strategic alliances. So I read this chapter, and I thought, wow, this is quite an amazing concept. And in the book, he talks about how anyone can go out there and literally make money from thin air by using other people's resources and, and, and lists. I thought, you know what, I've got to try this. So I went out there, and remember, right now in this economy where we are right now, I mean, I do a lot of stuff in the U.S., and the U.S. is, you know, some of the places in the U.S. have been hit harder than us in the U.K., and what's happened is, because the economy is in a downturn, here's the thing, guys. Don't say in your head, don't say that there's no opportunities out there because th the way the economy is. Don't say no one's spending money. They are, okay? But the thing is, you've got to spot the opportunities. There's more opportunities right now in this economy than there will ever be. And what I did, basically, was I, by seeing this, I approached one of the largest IT recruitment agencies in Europe. Now, here's the thing. In this economy... Uh, most big companies will now work with you because they're open to ideas. I mean, look, uh, uh, Mindy was talking about one of her clients who approached these banks with a book, and now he's doing deals with them, okay? You can approach big companies because they're now more open to looking at ideas because they all need to survive as well, and they need to grow their business. So I approached the largest IT recruitment agency in Europe with a proposition, and you might want to write this down. This is what I said to them. I said to them, if I can create an additional revenue stream for you without increasing your overhead, would you be interested? Okay, now who wouldn't, okay? 
right? Straight away they got back to me and said, you know, we are interested, and I arranged an appointment down in Regent Street, actually not very far from here in London, went to their head office, four people at a desk asking me the same question. Okay, Sahel, so tell us, how are you going to do this? How are you going to create an additional revenue profit stream for us without us increasing our overhead? And I said, look, it's pretty simple. It's called a joint venture, okay? And I said to them, okay, tell me, for, for instance, how many people do you have on your database? They said, we have you know, over 150,000 IT professionals. I said, okay. I said, what are you currently doing in terms of marketing to those people? They said, well, we send out a newsletter every two weeks. And then I proceeded to say, do you actually sell anything to them? They said, we don't. You know, we just advertise vacancies. I said, well, right now, there's no one's hiring computer consultants, right, because of Y2K. So I said, I have an opportunity for you, and I can create an additional profit stream. I said, I have these computer training courses that sell really well. And obviously, I showed them my conversion rates. I showed them the website, showed them exactly how we're making money. I said, if you endorse my courses to your list of IT professionals, we'll give you a percentage of every sale, and we'll do everything. We'll do all the, uh, you know, the, the, the affiliate links. We'll do all the tracking. We'll send you, uh, you know, a check in the post every month, and we'll give you stats that you know exactly how many people are coming to the website and ordering these courses. And it was phenomenal. That was my first very joint venture that I did. And here's the thing, guys. In the first year of our little... Uh, computer training website, we did close to 60,000 pounds. With this one joint venture, our turnover shot up to just shy of 300,000 pounds, okay, in our second year. Absolutely phenomenal. And from there, I was hooked. I thought to myself, wow, you know, where else can I do this? And fast forward to 2002, the whole industry changed uh, in terms of what we were doing in terms of computer training. Who's heard of the term e learning? Okay, now e-learning had been developed in 2002, and um, most of the bigger companies now were doing video-based training. This is like 10, 15 years ago, T about 10 years ago. They were doing video-based training, and it was called e-learning. And I thought to myself, you know, let's try and compete with these guys because we want to go to a bigger market. We want to go to a corporate market. And we can't do them with PDF courses. You know, they're after, they want the best courses in the market. So what I did was, I, again, I went uh, back to uh, Jay Abraham's book, and he talked about something called licensing. Who's heard of licensing? Okay, licensing is phenomenal. I'm going to show you a few techniques and strategies that you can use to, to make millions from licensing, and that's one of the main things that I do. Um, so I went out there and did some research and realized that it was costing us uh, $15,000, actually it was in dollars, per hour of e-learning training, okay? And I thought, wow. Our competitors have 150 titles. We can't compete with that. It's going to cost us over a million dollars. So I thought to myself, how quick can we acquire the rights, or how quick can we get up to a stage where we have these products to sell to corporates? So what I did was um, I looked on the internet, and I found a company in the US who actually had the content we wanted. They had all the courses already developed. And I contacted them and I said, you know, we're interested in licensing your content, and I'd also like an exclusive license branded, okay, in my name. And the funny thing is, nowadays, what do they call it? Who's heard of private label rights? Okay, yeah, they call it PLR. In the corporate world, we call it uh, white labeling. And, um, you know, I contacted this company, and they said, yeah, sure, Sahel, we can do that for you, but it's going to cost you $100,000 for a license. And I was like, you know what, I don't really want to spend any money here. So what I did was I, I jumped on a plane, I flew to the US, a company in Clearwater, a multi-million uh, dollar corporation, and um, it was really bizarre, actually. I, 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 was I was sitting in the office of the CEO, who was a, a woman who owned the company, very successful lady. And while sitting in the office, uh, you know, she had a beautiful office, like a walnut desk and a walnut bookcase. I glanced over to the bookcase, and I, I started looking at the books, and I was like, wow, she's got some really cool marketing books. Guess what book I saw on the, on the bookshelf? <laughs> Jay Abraham, okay? So I thought, wow, okay, this is cool, because she's going to understand exactly when I start talking about these concepts of joint ventures. So she comes in, I sit down, and we start talking about JVs and joint ventures, and I said, look, this is what I'd really like to do with your company, but I don't want to spend $100,000 on a license, but what I'm prepared to do is to show my commitment is place a minimum order of $10,000 a month and I guarantee I'll make you more than $100,000, okay, within the next couple of weeks. So um, I, I bagged the deal, shook, we, we shook hands, I committed $10,000, okay, to her up front, and now we were in a position where we had over 160 titles, and uh, we had it white-labeled as our own brand, and now we were operating in the corporate market. So from there we went, we shot up to a seven-figure business. We were doing over a million-pound turnover, and guess how much it cost me? $10,000, okay? All right, so that's the power of licensing. But get this, here's the amazing thing. In the U.S., 
she was selling her training programs for three nine nine seven dollars. Guess how much we were selling it for in the UK? No. Yeah, three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven pounds. But here's the here's the, here's the real interesting thing. We were buying it from her at seventy-five percent below dollar retail. Okay, so we were buying it at seventy-five percent off the three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars and selling it for three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven pounds. Our margins were close to ninety-two, ninety-five percent. We were making pure profit. It's absolutely amazing what you can do by doing joint ventures and licensing. So that was amazing for us, and that put us up onto a seven-figure business, and now we were dealing with bigger companies, and we had an established brand. Now, fast forward to 2006, and here's the thing, guys. When you're out and about, when you're reading things, when you understand joint ventures, your brain just fixes in another level altogether. You start seeing opportunities, okay? And in 2006, I was reading uh, the Financial Times. They, they had something called the Sunday Times Fast Track 100. Who's heard of that? Okay, showcases the 100 fastest growing companies in a sector, and obviously ours was information technology. And while reading that magazine, I came across a company, a 100 million uh, uh, pound uh, company, uh, uh, IT group, that had over 500,000 customers on their list. Guess what I thought? Joint venture, right? So I approached this company with the same thing, you know, I said the same thing, you know, if I can create an additional profit revenue stream for you without increasing your overheads, would you be interested? Man, who wouldn't, okay? And they got back to me, I got invited to their offices, beautiful glass building, this is a hundred million IT group, beautiful glass building, uh, you know, uh, Jags, BMWs, Mercedes outside, and I went up to their offices and they got a beautiful like panoramic uh, boardroom. And I walk into this room, and you've got the chairman and the CEO. The chairman is uh, the CEO's father, his father and son team. And I, I'm sitting there, okay, and uh, I begin my pitch. I start talking about the joint ventures that I've done, and I start talking about the deal that I want to do with them. Fifteen minutes into my pitch, I get stopped. The chairman gets up and says, so hell, we're not really interested in doing a joint venture with you. And I was like, what? You know, I came all the way here, I'm sitting here, and I was like, you know what? I got my foot in the door. That was good enough, right? So I begin to get up, and then the CEO sits me down and says, Hell, we're not interested in doing a joint venture with you. We're interested in buying your business. Okay? Exactly. So they were a big 100 million IT group. They had money in their balance sheet. They were looking at making more acquisitions. And, you know, I sat there, and uh, because, I had two, well, because I already had two partners in the business by then, I couldn't make a decision there and then. So I went back, spoke to my business partners, and they basically wanted to acquire us because we had business customers, they had consumers. So they wanted to amalgamate us into their company as a business division. So I sat with my partners, and what we decided to do was this. We decided to do a part cash, part equity. They gave us cash, and we had equity in a 100 million IT group. So 2006... Um, I was now sitting on the, the board of a 100 million IT group. I had shares in excess of 10 million, and it was an amazing time for all of us. We all became multi-millionaires, and it was absolutely phenomenal. I had an exit plan, okay? I was going to be there for a year, and after a year, I would cash out and just sit, by, sit on some beach for a couple of years, I guess, and just figure out what my next move was. And uh, here's the interesting thing, you know, I was the uh, managing director of the business and um, within uh, 12 months I doubled the business. And how did I do that? Now, I basically, I stepped down as MD and instead of working in the business, I was working on the business. Okay, another, another really important tip. And it was phenomenal. Uh, 2007 came and uh, end of 2007 was my exit. I was like, you know, I'm, I've done what I've done here, I've built the business, uh, I've, I've cashed out, I've got my shares, I'm going to cash out. But, unfortunately, 2008, the company that had been around for 25 years went bust. Who remembers Woolworths? Been around for what, 25, 26 years? And all of a sudden, what wiped out? So, it was phenomenal. You know, we, we got called in the next day. We were told the company was going into liquidation. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And here's the thing. Anyone here, be very wary of signing guarantees with banks, okay? Because as directors of the new division, that's what we did. And there was a debt of about 6.5, 6.6 million that we were responsible for now, okay? So, you know, banks came after us, we negotiated with the banks, and I ended up selling everything. I had to sell all my assets, the beautiful house that I lived in, the Ferrari, the Porsche, everything went, okay? And I was broke, you know, I lost everything. And it was, it was actually a really... I just can't describe it, you know? I can't describe, once you're used to living the jet set lifestyle, and then it gets taken away from you right under your feet, okay? And here's the thing, 
you still had those bills to pay. You still had those bills coming through the door, okay? Now, I know how it works. I, I speak at a lot of events, and I resonate with a lot of people who sit there and they're in survival mode, okay? And they're watching people on the stage and, you know, we're, we're, we're doing our presentation and we've got offers and programs. I really resonate with a lot of you in this room. I have been there, okay? I have been there, so I know exactly what people, you know, when people go to events, what they're looking for, they're looking for that opportunity, okay? I know I've been there. So it was a very upsetting time for me. I lost everything, but fortunately for me, um, you know, I moved back home because, and my old bedroom was still at home. Okay, yeah, my mum's house, the roof, okay. My old bedroom was still there, amazing. She just kept the old bedroom, she didn't do anything with it. So, <laughs> bizarre, wasn't it? It's like she knew I was coming back home. <laughs> For God's sake, I'm trying to get out, okay. I got home eventually, but I came back to where I started, okay. So now I was uh, back at home and I was depressed, you know. I, I, was ma I went through such a manic depression because here's the thing. Around me, in my old neighbourhood, all my old school friends were now successful accountants, doctors, or whatever they were, and they all had their houses and their, their nice cars. And guess what they said to me? You know, my friends said to me, Sahel, hell, you should have stayed in your job as an accountant. <laughs> it's like, dude, no. So, yeah, so, you know, for me, it was like, oh, I've got to get out of here. So, you know, with the little money that I had left over, I went on a spiritual journey, okay, a spiritual retreat, okay. I thought to myself, you know, what? I've been there and done it. I've lived a multimillionaire. I've been on private jets, yachts, and I've had all that. What do I do right now? And I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, I want to be a warrior. I want to go out there and volunteer and help people in need. And, but, you know, I realized a lot. I realized that my journey as an entrepreneur hadn't really finished, okay, and it hadn't even begun because once an entrepreneur always an entrepreneur. And with that, I came straight home, sat down, and I, was, I started to work out my next move. Now, here's the thing. I, I still remember that, remember that day because I sat down with my, with my mother on, on our sofa, and she said to me, so what are you going to do right now? And I said, look, I, I don't know. I need to do something. And my mom said to me this. She said, look, here's the thing, right? It's not, don't, you know, just because you haven't got the, the bank balance anymore and the big fat wallet and the cars and the house, she goes, what you have is here in your brain. It's in your mind. Your success is in your mind. You always knew you were going to be successful. And my mom says, look, no matter what, that is not really, that is not always a gauge of your success, okay? Money is not always the gauge of your success. It's what you have in your he head and it's the action you take and it's the opportunities that you grasp, okay? And my mom said, look, you can be successful again because in your head, you, that success has never died. You might have lost everything around you, but you haven't. And um, I thought to myself, you know what? She's right. And here's the thing, guys. When you're down there, where's the only way you can go? Okay? So I can't go any lower than I am right there. I had to go up. So I had to go upwards. And then I sat down and I thought to myself, what do I do? You know, I need to really start making some money. You know, I need to go back into to being successful and wealthy. And I did the same thing that everyone does. I came to events you know, uh, events where people were selling programs on the stage and, you know, one guy was selling how to become a millionaire in 12 months, one guy was selling how to become a millionaire in 12 days, one was selling how to become a millionaire in 12 minutes, one said how to become a millionaire in 12 seconds, and I was like, 12 seconds have gone, I'm even broke, more broke than I was before. I thought, you know what, scrap this, you know, I've got to sit down and I've got to focus and I've got to think about what is, what, what is it that I'm good at, okay? What are my core skills? Everyone in this room is unique, right? Don't let, me, don't let everyone tell you that I'm more successful than you because I have money and because of what I do. Everyone in this room, we're all unique. You have skills that I don't have, okay? I have skills that you don't have, okay? You just need to find out what those skills are, okay? That's the most important thing. I sat down and thought to myself, okay, look, wh what am I good at? What have I done that's worked? And what can I do again? I was like, the joint ventures, right? I did it before. I made money out of thin air, and I can do it again. So I decided, and I set myself a challenge. I said, you know what? I'm going to do a couple of big joint ventures, and I'm going to make a million pounds in 12 months. That's the goal I set myself. But you know what? I did it in 30 days. And now I'm going to take you through step by step how I did it. And you're going to laugh because it is so simple the way I did it. So here's what happened. Again, opportunities are everywhere. I was reading the mail on Sunday. OK, let me just take the. I was reading the mail on Sunday, and I came across an advert for this book. Okay, and this book, you probably see it, it's probably, they, they advertise it now and again, a full page spread in the mail on Sunday. It's how to master your computer in just two hours. But it wasn't the book that was interesting, okay? At the bottom of the uh, newspaper, it said uh, over 400,000 copies sold. So guess what I thought? Joint venture, right? I thought, you know, they sold 400,000 copies of this book. There must be an opportunity for me to do something or do a JV with them, right? So I contacted them, and this is what I did. 
I contacted them and I said, you know, you've got this book, right? You sold 400,000 copies of it. Do you have a video version of the book? They said, no. I said, okay, look, I've got a video version of this book. Would you be interested in selling that to your existing customers? Guess what they said? Yes, okay? So here's the thing, guys. First of all, I'd never had the product. I just pitched it. Remember that, right? Remember that. I'd never had the product, okay? <laughs> Didn't have the product. And now they invited me to come and speak to them. They said, yeah, Sahel, come over and bring the DVD with you so we can have a look at it. <laughs> I still, I, listen, I still went to that meeting. I made an excuse. I sat down with the MD, and this is a 25 million uh, pound direct mail publishing company in the UK. Uh, sat with the MD, and he said to me, so Sahel, um, let's have a look at the DVD. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I said, you know what? I was such a rush to get it. I left it on my table at home. And it was like, okay. And it was like, okay, look, if you can get it to us within the next five days, we are really interested in doing something with it. And if it fits the, uh, our, you know, our market and demographics, then definitely we would like to do something with it and, you know, to our existing customers. I thought, oh, damn, they really want to do a deal. So, yeah. So I walked out of the office thinking, oh, what, crap, what do, I do, what do I do now? I don't even have the product. So I spent two days going to like uh, Staples and Office World, and you know you go in there and you see these racks, okay, with these DVD, DVDs, how to use your how to use your computer. So I went looking around for this product because I thought, you know what, I've got to find this product because you know these guys really want to do a deal. Yeah, exactly. So I know. So I, I started contacting all the companies who sold these DVDs, and I said, look, I have a client. And I think we can shift a couple of thousand units of your product. <coughs> Would you be interested in doing a deal where um, you know, we, we're flexible on pricing and we can rebrand the product? And they said, Look, yeah, sure, Sahel. The best we can do is give you 30% as, as a reseller. And I was like, I'm not, ask, I'm not after a 30% reseller. We've got to be more flexible than that. So after two days, I thought, you know what? Forget this. I'm wasting my time trying to explain to him how this deal works. So I went onto a website, you might want to write this down, called www elance.com. Who's heard of Elance? Okay, brilliant website. E-L-A-N-C-E.com. Brilliant website where you can go on to and, uh, you know, there's a lot of freelance people on there who will do projects and do work for you and they just, they just bid for it. So I put up this project on Elance. I said, look, I've got a book that needs to be created into a video course and this is what it is and, you know, uh, people started bidding on it. I ended up paying $500 for a, who knows what Camtasia is? Write that down as well, C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. -S you can use that to create uh, products from, from your book if you want. It's, it's an amazing tool. They created a, uh, a DVD training course based on the contents of the book. I paid for oh, Camtasia, C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A.com. C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. -A -A. Just type Camtasia into Google. Google will tell you. Sorry? Uh, no, what I'll do, I think I've got it on the next slide, but um, yeah, I'll do that for you. Okay. So I got this uh, DVD produced, outsourced, $500, took it back to the company. They loved it. The managing director sitting there thinking, wow, this is awesome. It's just like the book. And I'm like, well, you know, my team have been up for like a couple of days, you know, putting this thing together, right? <laughs> right? Got to look good, yeah? Got to look good, yeah? And uh, he's like, wow, this is awesome. He, and he's like, what other titles have you got? And I'm like, what other titles do you want? And he's sitting there making his list. <laughs> I'm like, look, ho, ho, ho. I'm like, dude, hold up. Look, let, let's get this one out the door first. If it works, then, you know, we'll look at other ones. So we sat there, and we, then we started working out, you know, uh, uh, looking at stats. They're a direct mail company, publishing company, so they, they know their stats. And I said, okay, out of the 400,000 uh, current customers you have, how many of them do you think will, 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 can we upsell to the DVD course? And they said, he said, well, I reckon about 50% of them will buy. So put that in your head, yeah? 200,000 customers, okay? And then we started negotiating and working out my percentage. And I said, okay, how much will I be making? And they work like QVC. They work, if you ever approach QVC, actually, and I've got a couple of friends who actually do, uh, um, can put deals together with QVC. Um, and you might have seen earlier in Andy Harrington's testimonial, another good friend of mine, who knows who James Lavers is? Yeah, phenomenal guy. He actually presents on, on QVC. They work on a points basis. They take a, a percentage, you know, they give you a tiny, tiny percentage. And I said, look, forget that. How, how much do you want to sell the DVD for? And he's like, well, we'll probably pitch it at 19.95. I said, here's the thing. Every DVD that you sell, um, I will give you a license, okay, a license to duplicate the DVD, distribute the DVD, market and promote it. You just give me five pounds for each one you sell, okay? So work that out. What's that? Five pounds times 200,000. A million, okay? So we went back and uh, we shook on the deal 
and I sat down with him and we start, he started drawing up this agreement. In the agreement, it said that I have access to uh, 400,000 customers, right? Here's the interesting thing. He said to me, Sahel, if this, um, if this thing really works, I'd like to push this out to my whole customer database. Guess how big his database was? 4.2 million customers. So when I tell the story of how I went from zero to 4 million customers in 30 days, that is exactly how I did it. So I went back and I, I redid the contract, I printed it out, and I said, oh, you've got to sign this. So here's the actual, here is the actual contract I carry with me today. And the funny thing is, you know, all these big gurus, right, marketing gurus, they said to me, so you're so funny. You know when, when we made our first dollar online, we put it on the wall and took a picture? He goes, you carry, you know, you've you got a laminated million pound contract that you carry with you wherever you go. So deal done and deal was signed. And uh, it took us close to 18 months, okay, to do this deal. Because um, they're like a direct mail company, and sometimes it's very hard to work with companies like that, but you've got to be persistent. So let me take you through exactly how I did the deal and the outcome, and I'll take you through it step by step. So here's the million pound joint venture in 30 days. I found a list of 400,000 buyers, okay? Contacted the publishing company with a JV proposal without the product, okay? I didn't initially have the product. So don't be afraid to approach companies, even if you have an idea, for example, or you see uh, someone who has a product, like a book, or you know, there's an author out there that you can do a deal with. I ended up using elance.com to create a complimentary product for just $500, okay? It cost me $500. I introduced and licensed the product to the list owner, making five pounds per unit sold without handling anything. It was hands-free, I didn't do anything. Uh, with a total of, we just did over 201,462 units, and I collected just over a million pounds as my JV commission, okay? So that's one million pound joint venture. People always say to me, so how you always talk about, you know, this million pound JV, that's, you know, that's your biggest claim to fame. But here, here's the thing, it isn't. I'm going to take you through some other ones that I've been doing over the last two years. So that's the main million pound joint venture in 30 days, and that's something that you guys can easily replicate. How, how did you like that one? Yeah? Okay, so that's something that you guys can easily replicate. Keep your eyes open for opportunities like that. And this is what I train all my joint venture brokers to do, okay? And I even hand them some of my own deals to work on. So here's the next million pound joint venture, possibly, okay? Big question mark there. Here's another book um, that I was approached by someone. He's a, a best-selling author on Amazon, and it's basically, all it is, it is, is who knows what scrapbooking is? Here's the thing, right? Scrapbooking is massive in America. I mean, this is a book called 101 Scrapbooking uh, Tips, okay? It's, it's a great book. But in America, I did some research, and I found out that it is actually a $2 billion market. Absolutely phenomenal. It's so big in America. And here's what we did. We took the book, and we created a back-end video membership site. So any, everyone who buys the book now has access to a membership site with all the tips as videos, okay? And here's some of the estimates on what we hope to be doing with this campaign. We should exceed at least 400,000 units easily. I reckon we'll do about half a million because this is a $2 billion uh, market. Um, uh, we're, we're making two pounds on each book, and then we have a back-end membership site that we're making two pounds on as well. And even at, even at what, 2%, percent we'll be doing probably 80,000 members. So this JV deal should make us at least 960K, close to a million pounds. Okay, so this is the things that you can do. And here's the thing. Most authors don't make money, okay? Only the top authors make money. How do they make money? From their back-end programs, okay? Coaching, consulting, okay? That's where the secret is. Your book is your calling card, okay? That's the secret. Most authors do not make their money from their books. They make their money on the back-end, okay? And this is what we do as joint venture brokers. We help them connect that back-end, and we take a huge percentage. Okay, so here's the thing. Who knows? Who's heard of Tim Ferriss? Okay, four-hour work week. Who's, who's read the book? Awesome book. Now, did you know, who, who knows how he promoted that book? Okay, he promoted it through joint ventures. But what he did was, he approached some of the largest blog sites on the internet to review and promote his book. So it's absolutely phenomenal that the route he took was via joint ventures, okay? So the 4-Hour Work Week became a number one bestseller just through joint ventures. Okay, I bet most of you didn't know that, right? So this is what he did. He approached these uh, blog sites. Because they have such traffic and such following, he used them to do a JV, okay? And that's how he became a uh, uh, number one uh, world bestseller. Um, see, all successful authors need joint ventures, okay? Here's another. Who's heard of a book called Work the System? Okay, right. Here's the thing. Work the System is an expanded version of the four-hour work week, and it's, it's, it's an American book. And I was approached recently by the author, Sam Carpenter. 
So he approached me, um, uh, he's the author of the book, who approached me this phenomenal book. I've read it, he works with corporations. And what I'm doing with him now is we're developing a $3,000 coaching program for businesses and a $25,000 coaching program for consultants. Because that's where the real money is. And you know, me as a joint venture broker, I come in and make those connections for him, okay? So that's uh, one of the projects I'm working on right now as in the author space. Here's another thing. Who remembers, um, who watched Andy Harrington's presentation? Great guy, right? Now, in his testimonial, who saw the testimonial from Chris Farrell? Who knows who Chris Farrell is? And in Andy Han Harrington's, uh, in his presentation, how much do you say Chris Farrell made from that deal? Okay, guess who was the guy behind that deal? Exactly. So here, I'm going to tell you exactly how I did this. Here's Chris Farrell. I've spoken with him at a few events. I met him um, when we were in London. He approaches me and says, hey, look, I really want to do this big launch I want to create this product. Can you help me do that? And uh, I'm looking for someone to connect with. And specifically, who sort of guy heard of a guy called Mike Phil Same? Okay. He wanted to be connected with Mike Phil Same. Mike Phil Same is a very, very good friend of mine. So I put these two guys together. They launched affiliate.com. And we did just over $4 million with that launch, that product. Okay. So that's a pretty, pretty cool story. So, um, and there you go. Chris Farrell made uh, a million pounds with that deal. Okay, create, creating joint ventures is very lucrative. Let me tell you, I love doing what I do, okay? And here's, here's just a quick picture to show you how lucrative doing JVs is, is for me. We just put an offer down on this, this, this beautiful house. It's a 10 bedroom, 11,500 square foot mansion in Virginia Water. And I would never imagine that I could come back to being successful again in the space of what? 9, 10, 11, 12, 3 years? But just by doing joint ventures. So it's absolutely phenomenal. This is something that you guys need to learn. And this is something that you guys need to really, really do if you want to be successful and create real wealth. Okay, so let's look at, um, first of all, the joint venture mindset. To be successful at doing joint ventures, you need to have something called the joint venture mindset, okay? And basically, without the right success mindset, you're destined to fail. Now, who uses visualization in here? Or who's used it? Okay, powerful tool. I use that all the time. Who's, who's used affirmations at all in here? Okay, excellent. So what I want to do right now is um, I want to show you how to attract the energy of opportunity and success by using affirmations, right? So I want everyone to stand up. See, that's a great thing as speakers. We, we, we have such control over the audience. <laughs> okay, so I want you to repeat after me. I've got two affirmations. This is strong affirmations. And, you know, use this regularly, you know, in your life to become successful and your business. So repeat after me. I am the right person. In the, right place, in the right place, at the right time, the right time doing the right things, the right things with, the right people, with the right people. Okay, and another one, I am aware of, I am aware of and, open to, and open to unlimited, unlimited joint, venture joint venture opportunities. I am involved in, involved in the, best, the best high level, high level joint venture opportunities. Thank you very much. Okay, brilliant. So, you know, use affirmations in your life because it's, uh, it's really powerful and it's really strong. And it works. You know, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. And, you know, everyone always asks me, how do you manage to do some really cool things? How do you manage to take yourself beyond the next level? And, guys, in your life, it's all about taking the next step. Push yourself, okay? Push yourself to any, every boundary that you can. And that's how you become successful. And, you know, once, you, once you're on the treadmill of success, just keep running, okay? That's the easy thing about, well, it's not easy. I wouldn't say it's easy, but becoming successful, that's what you need to do. And, you know, always see yourself as someone adding value to others, okay? That's the biggest thing that I've learned about being successful and creating success in such a short space of time. Creating value, okay? And giving as much as I can to other people, okay? So let's, uh, let's do some uh, training now. I'm going to cover some training that I do in my uh, uh, $10,000 brokering program. And this is going to be some really, really cool. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to share some really cool things that I don't really share outside of a, a room with my brokers. So first of all, um, uh, places where you can find potential joint venture partners, OK? First of all, uh, an existing mailing list, customer list, or newsletter. Now, this is, uh, for me, the quickest and the best way to find potential joint venture partners. Why? Because um, they have customers that have already done business with them. So you're not dealing with prospects. You know when you approach someone and you say, okay, can you uh, promote my book or promote my course or my program? How many people do you have on your list? Oh, I've got 50,000 people. Wow, big list. Hang on a minute. How many buyers do you have on there? Oh, 25. Yeah? Okay, so it's not about prospects, it's about buyers. That's the most important thing. And that's what you need to clarify when you're asking those questions. 
So, you know, they have a customer list and they've already done business with them, so they have a leverage relationship, okay? Here's some of the sites you want to write down. First of all, in the UK, we have um, highlightdms.co.uk. That's run by a very good friend of mine, Mike Chantry. That's if you're looking for lists in the UK. And in the US, we have mediafinder.com. So if you're, in the U if you're looking for US lists, you use mediafinder.com or Highlight DMS. And I'm going to show you how to use these websites. So, for example, when you go to Highlight, you all got that, right? No? Okay. No? okay. Someone's writing really slow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yep. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, so here's his, his the Highlight um, mailing list broker website. When you go into the website, you search. So, so let's say, for example, you have a book on... Um, on uh, physical training, okay, like um, uh, you know, uh, uh, ab training or physical training, for example, and you want to find a list that you can promote your book to, right? Okay, you go to this website, you type it in, and this is what it brings up. This has brought up a a website of uh, people who are into you know um, uh, health and technology. Okay, so here's the list name. It's called uh, Maxi Miles, and they have 892,617 buyers on the list, right? So you can promote your book or your program or whatever you're doing to 892,617 buyers, pre-qualified, and it'll even give you exactly what they spend and how much so you know how to target, okay? Now here's the thing. Can you see there where it says quantity and then base price? It costs you 120 pounds per thousand names, okay? Remember that if you want to purchase these lists and use these lists. Uh, the list owner's website is also put there. It's maximiles.co.uk. So it shows you the list owner's website, so you can go and see the website. Now, here's the thing, guys. If you wanted to acquire access to this whole list, guess how much it would cost you? Someone do the working out. A lot, yeah? Well, it's 107 million pounds. <laughs> but what if I showed you a way that you can get access to that list for free? Would you be interested? Now, here's the thing, guys. Whatever I share in this room stays in this room, okay? Yeah. Uh, no, it won't. I know it won't. I'll see this on Facebook. I'll see it on Facebook tonight, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share that with you, but not right now, a bit later. So <laughs> keep the suspense. Okay, so the next place to find really good uh, targeted joint venture partners is here, for example, seminars and paid events, okay? Now, here's the thing. You can meet and network with a lot of uh, serious and motivated people, but here's the thing that I found to be very successful. I, dominate in a, I operate in a place of exclusivity with my programs, okay? And I only look for a select amount of people to come onto my programs. I'm not like a, you know, here it is, 40, 50 people, I'll sell as many as I can. I don't work like that. And the thing is, when I go to paid events, that's where I find the quality of people that either come into my program or that I can work with a joint venture partner. So always consider paying that bit extra. And I'll give you an example. Um, I went to, uh, I paid 500 pounds for a uh, one day speaking workshop. And um, uh, the only reason I went there is because in that room were CEOs of big companies. And these are companies that I wanted to connect with. So I went to this workshop and uh, in the room was, I think about eight people, CEOs who wanted to learn how to speak. I connected with three of those CEOs, and one of them is actually um, is the owner of a very, very, actually the largest theme park in the UK. You can guess which theme park that is, I'm not going to say. Um, but, you know, I managed to get some deals hooked up with these guys, and now I work, I'm working with them on joint ventures, and it's absolutely phenomenal. And here's the thing, when you go to seminars and paid events, you have to ask the right questions, okay? And I'm going to give you, it's, it's cool that I'm speaking today because you've got another two days to apply this, okay? Here's the questions, write them down. When you approach someone at a seminar, the first question you want to ask them is, hey, how did you get started as a blank? Yeah. Okay, so you ask them a question, hey, how did you get started as a, if someone says to you, you say, so what do you do? Then let them, let them answer, be very quiet, and then the question you want to ask them is, how did you get started as a, because here's the thing, guys, people like to be, people like people who are interested in them, okay, and it's so true that the saying, people only do business with people they 
Like, it's so true. It's unbelievable. Not, not, doing people, not doing business with people who like their fan pages, right? No, no. Just who like, okay? who like them. So how did you get started? As a, that's the question to ask. Second question, there's only two questions you need to ask when you go to these events. Next one is, how can I help you sell more of your product or service? So what you're saying is, look, how can I help you sell more of your, whatever it is, your book or your program or your coaching program? Because here's the thing, guys. When you're doing business with people, you know, you, you want to give first, okay? My motto in life is give first, ask later, okay? Because I always try and give value as much as I can. And that's what, that's what, this, this, that's what business is all about. It's about building relationships, okay? Okay. Uh, finding potential joint venture partners using social network sites. Who's on Facebook? Wow. Who uses Twitter? Who uses LinkedIn? Okay, of course, we've got a lot of people here. There's still a few people here not using social media. It's quite, uh, quite surprising. So here's some of the sites, um, and I'll show you how I use social media to connect with players, okay? Keep, keep persons of influence, and that's what you need to be doing if you really want to be successful as an author, speaker, uh, whatever you do in your business, and become well-known and separate yourself from everyone else so you can start charging the higher prices, okay? So this, this is the technique that I use, and I'll share with you exactly what I do. People are like, damn, how do you know all these people? I mean, I, I was going to put up a slide of all the pictures of all the, you know, the, all the, the famous people that I know, but I thought, you know what, it, let's just go straight into it, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. So here's what I do. I use Facebook to connect with people who are key influencers, and you can do that in each of your industries. You can connect with key, pe key people of influence, okay? This is what I do. I approach them and I give value. And I'm going to share a really cheeky strategy with you. Well, you're going to laugh, but this is really cheeky. Now, who uses Amazon.com? Who buys books from Amazon? Okay, so you know when you go to Amazon, right, and you're looking for a book, do any of you use the feature where you can flip through the book before you buy it? Okay. Here's what I do. If I really want to get to know a really famous author, I go to Amazon. I don't buy their book. I flip through the first couple of chapters and I find some sentences or paragraphs. I message them on Facebook and say, oh, great book. I'm on page three right now and that paragraph that you wrote about blah, 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 absolutely amazing. Okay? And then I just, yeah, exactly. And then I just sit back and wait. You wait. It's a waiting game. You will get a reply and they'll say, thank you very much. You know, I'm really flattered that you write, like my book and you like whatever it is. My next move after that is to give them something of value. Now, here's the thing. Uh, people who sign up to my JV, uh, my brokering business program, get this manual with all these JV agreements and templates. Now, I sell this program for 10K, okay? I say to them, look, I want to really do something for you, and I think what I have will really help you and benefit you in terms of your business. I'd like to send you uh, my manual with all my JV agreements that I normally sell in my 10K program, and I send it across to them. I send them a link to download it. Then I sit back and wait. This is what you do, right? Sit back and wait. Bang, you get a message. They're like, wow, unbelievable. I can't believe you gave me that. You sell it for X amount of money. Oh, oh I'm really, really, oh, thank you very much. What can I do for you? Okay? When there's two things in business. There's two things in business and in life that you will hear that creates opportunities. One is, what can I do for you? And the other one is, how much? Okay? All right? Those are the two biggest things that you can use. Not use, but they'll create opportunities for you. So this is a technique that I use on Facebook to get to know all the big guys. Even if I'm not friends with someone, I will click them as a friend, but at the same time, I'll send the message as well. Okay? All right? So if, I might not be on their friends list, but I can still communicate with them. Right? And then what I do is this, guys. Once I've done that, I take them over to Skype. If they say, what can I do for you? I don't ask them for anything specific. I say, well, I'd just like to have a conversation with you on Skype, if possible. 15 minutes of your time just to have a quick chat with you. Is that okay? They're not going to say no. Bring them over to Skype, and that's where all my main contacts sit. Now, whenever I'm in the US or wherever I'm in the world, ping them, and guess what they say? So, hell, you're going to be in Vegas, you're going to be in LA. You're welcome. Come down to my house. You know, come down and see us. Come, I'd like you to meet my family. That's how you connect with people, okay? Not being forceful, not shoving your whatever it is in their faces, building that relationship, and just being honest and genuine, okay? And then after that, if any opportunities come, I can reapproach them and say, hey, you know, um, I've got this product or program. Can you have a look at it? Now what happens is it doesn't become a JV proposal. It just becomes a request, okay? So that's a simple way of really doing high-level joint ventures. Uh, who knows who Neil Asher is? Okay, Neil Asher is a very successful uh, uh, multimillionaire, and you know he was one of the guys that I wanted to connect with as well. And I did the same thing with him. I sent him the manual. We connected, and you know here's his um, uh, 
uh, his uh, um, post on Facebook. He says, you know, uh, thanks for your incredible generosity, Sahel. You're an inspiring man, okay? The generosity was I sent him something of great value, and he valued it and thought, you know what? No one does that. No one gives, gives before they start asking. So that's a technique that you guys can use if you want to connect with anyone in the industry. Here's the thing. It's not impossible to connect with anyone. You know, who's heard of the, the phrase six degrees of separation? That's bullshit. It's not six degrees anymore. I've done it in one and two. I've connected with players. Uh, Jack Canfield, um, James Malinchak, you know, even A-listers. I've connected them with f through one and two connections, okay? Now with social media, that's possible. So it's, it's not impossible to get in touch with anyone. Okay, let's move on. Um, how to use Google to find potential joint venture partners. Now, Google is an amazing resource. Two of the sites we have, uh, one is google.co.uk and the other one is google.com. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to narrow down your searches on Google for jo joint venture partners. Now, step one. Um, first of all, here, here's what you do. Write a list of keywords that closely match your targeted market. Okay? And then take each keyword and do the following search to find suitable JV partners. So if you're in the personal development space, put the plus sign in newsletter, and that'll give you a listing of all the personal development newsletters. Okay? Do the same thing with a forum, plus forum, that'll give you a list of all the forums. Uh, personal development plus blog, do that in the search box, and that'll bring you a list of all the key JV partners that you can contact. Step two, uh, what you do now is you, ha you have a list of results on the page, okay? Uh, on the left hand, uh, right hand side and the left hand side you have the PPC. Who knows what PPC is? Google AdWords basically, okay? They're good people to contact as well because they're spending money on advertising, okay? So they're more prone to doing JVs with. So you need to put them into, uh, you need to rank them in relevance and use this tool. Now remember earlier when I said to you, when you go to highlight DMS and you, and you want access to the 900,000 list, how to get it for free? Here's how you get it for free. All the profiles have their website, okay? Like, yeah, that, they had maximiles.co.uk. Use this tool here, whois.domaintools.com. If you use that tool, it'll tell you who owns the website and who is their contact. Because if you go to the website, most websites will not tell you who the main person to contact is. Who is domain tools will tell you who owns the site and who is their administrative contact. You contact that person and you say, look, I know you have this website. I know you have 892,000 buyers on your list. I know what products you have. I know you have a list of buyers. I know they're targeted. Guess what? I have a product. I have a program. I have a coaching program. Would you be interested in doing a JV? Okay? So that's how you get access to those lists for free. You don't need to pay for those lists at all. Because these people, I'll tell you, I've done deals with these people. They are... Th th they, are, they understand joint ventures and they will do joint ventures with you because they have a list that, needs, that they need to make money from, okay? So they understand the concept. So that's the way you get access to those lists for free. Uh, use this tool because the tool will tell you things like that. Who's heard of Alexa? Alexa.com. It, it gives you the ranking for the websites and demographics and it'll tell you whether they're blacklisted, how long they've been around, their visitor and contact details, okay? So this is a phenomenal tool. Um, who is .domaintools.com. You want to write that down. Right, now you've got uh, the list of, um, uh, you know, the, uh, predom the predominant list and the contact details. You now sh you should have a list of potential JV partners ready to contact. You want to put them all on a checklist and rate them A, B, or C. A is the ideal partners with large lists or traffic. B is second group of potential JV partners. And C, let someone else contact them because you want to concentrate on the first A and B part. Okay, so how do you contact them? This is how you contact them. You can use email online. This is the most a classic way to contact the most easiest way. Email is practical, easy, and cheap, and it's a great way to communicate with potential joint venture partners. But here's the problem. You know, most business owners receive a lot of email, and you, you get a lot of ju junk that goes to them. So your email, your proposal might get lost in their junk mail filters. So it should not be your only mode of contact. If you want to know the best way to get hold of anyone and uh, do business with joint venture partners, it's this, FedEx or special delivery. And I'll tell you exactly how I've used this to get hold of some really well-known people in, in business. So this is, the, I, I think, personally, this is the best way to contact potential partners. It's professional. It really gets used because everyone's trying to do email and social media, but everyone's, uh, you know, um, uh, forgetting about direct mail. I remember Andy spoke about this earlier on. It's a goldmine. It's a goldmine. 
So, and the thing is, you get past the first barrier because it always gets opened, right? Uh, it gets past the gatekeeper, and as long as it's addressed to the decision maker and marked as urgent, please hand deliver. Now, I'll tell you something that I used to do. Um, I used to go into, uh, you know, bookstores like Devil H. Smith, and you know they've got the top 10 business books, right? Yeah? I used to take a business book from the top 10 shelf and write an inscription in there, and I used to send the books out to CEOs of companies. And I used to say something like, you know, I, 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 I either pointing at a recent article or something that they've done in their business that is really good and commending them on it and saying that, you know what, I, I hope your, your success continues and put my name and my number at the bottom. Now, out of, let's say, for example, 10 books I sent out, I used to get seven phone calls, uh, three, four from CEOs and the rest from their PAs. That's how I got in touch with them. And they used to ask me, thanks for the book, tell me a bit more about yourself, okay? And again, you know, use those questions that I told you earlier. That's how you connect with people. It's a great way to connect with people. I mean, I've heard people send sushi by FedEx, but how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. I never tried that one. I thought I'd leave that. I don't think it's going to work for me. Um, okay, so um, here's, here's how to use the phone to contact JV Partners, okay? Only ever use the phone after you've sent a proposal out. Don't try and pitch on the phone. It doesn't work. So many people are selling and, uh, you know, um, pitching on the phone that, you know, you, you, your, the phone will just get slammed down straight away. So only ever send, uh, only ever phone someone after you've sent a proposal out just to confirm they've got the proposal and if, if they want more questions answered. And only ever use the, f the phone to follow up or get an appointment. Never pitch on the phone, okay? Let me tell you that. Don't use the phone for pitching unless you know the person very well. So here's my view on agreements and joint venture contracts. Um, NDAs, only ever use a non-disclosure. Who's used NDAs before? Okay, cool. Who's a big fan of NDAs? Who's not a big fan of NDAs? Okay, interesting. Okay, some people like to use NDAs, but only use it if you're uh, telling the other party things like you're, uh, you're sharing intellectual property, uh, trade secrets, or your entire sales process, okay? Because you don't want them to rip that off. That's the main point why we use NDAs. Here's the thing with joint venture contracts. Only start drafting an agreement once a deal has been solidified and you have a confirmation to go ahead, okay? When someone says to you, okay, fine, send us, send us the agreement, that's when you start, you know, putting it together. Don't, because it, it takes such a long time to put the agreements together, you don't want to be doing that. And like, you know, people on my program get all the agreements for free. Okay, so here's some uh, JV case studies I want to share with you and show you this stuff actually works. Here's uh, Kim. Uh, Kim met me on Mike Paul Sam's Marketers Cruise. He has this cruise every year that he does for internet marketers. And uh, I, I went on this cruise probably about two years ago. And then I went on a previous cruise last year uh, where we had people like, who's that, Michael Gerber, the e-myth, and uh, Jay Conrad Levison? Yeah, okay, so you get to meet some really, really influential people. So she met me and she, um, we had a brief conversation over dinner about what I do. So here's the thing, when I go to these events, right, I don't, uh, I don't tell people that I'm a JV broker and here's my, here's my, here's my upfront retainer, what I, I charge $10,000 upfront and I take a percentage. I went to these events to help people. So when I was at this event, I was running around just trying to match people together, okay? And that way people, you know, get to know me and they think, wow, this guy's really good. He's like the JV guy. This is what they call me. So sh she told me, what are you doing? You know, over dinner, I see you running around like a headless chicken. What are you doing? And I said, I'm just trying to put people together. That's what I do. So she said, look, she contacted me two weeks after the cruise and says, look, I, I need to raise money for medical school. I'm doing two and three jobs and I'm getting sick and tired. I want to do what you do. I want to make money out of thin air. Okay? So, okay. All right. So, uh, we, had a, we had a strategy session. This is what I do with a lot of people on my program. You know, we have strategy sessions first. I try and identify what is right for you, okay, and what is not right for you. That's how I work. I, I won't just take your money. I have to be sure 100% that, you know, you're the right person for whatever it is that I do or, you know, even if I recommend you to someone else that it's the right thing for you. So, we had a strategy session. And I said, okay, look, you've got the skills. Um, you know, uh, see, women really do well at this sort of thing, okay? It's not, nothing to do with using your femininity, but they're, they're just better at building relationships. So I said, it'd be, it'd be interesting. So I rolled on to my JV coaching program. I also connected her with a few of my contacts, and here's what she did. Six weeks later, she did her first JV deal, putting together a product owner and a big list owner. She, she comes up and she's really excited, and I said, oh, wh what happened? She goes, you won't believe it. I said, what? She goes, this is what I did. She, the, the product was a $99 a month membership site, and her first week she did 262 sales, and she took 20% of the commission, and she made $5,000 in her first week, okay? At the end of the, by the end of the month, she made $20,000, okay? So how cool is that? But here's the really cool thing. 
She was, uh, she's based in Miami, okay, and she was in one of the nightclubs, and she was like saying to people, I'm a JV broker, I'm a JV broker, okay. Who, and someone comes up and says, I heard you're a joint venture broker, you put people together, she goes, yes, I do. And they said, we're, we're, we're a high-end vodka drinks company, and we're looking to get in some of the big nightclub chains in Miami, can you help? She goes, yeah, sure I can. So this is what she did for them, this is so cool. She JV'd his drinks into the top nightclub chains in Miami, and uh, she made $35 a case. With a, we had a minimum order commitment on each deal of 2,000 orders. And with that first deal, she made $70,000. But here's the thing, right? She comes up to me and says, Sahil, um, what's the, she, she says to me, you know, what's the point of becoming a doctor? I might as well just be a JV broker. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Stay in school. I don't know what your mum and dad chased me down the road with a stick saying, my daughter was going to be a doctor. And now she's a JV broker. And I said, no, no, no. Stay in school. Stay in school and just do this whenever you need to, create extra income, okay? And uh, last I heard, she's doing, she's doing very, very well at, uh, at medical school right now. Um, here's another JV case study. Uh, uh, Mark uh, completed one of my JV coaching programs and was originally looking to do a really small JV, right? He said, I'll start off with a small deal. And I said, look, I, said, I had a strategy session. I said, look, dude, just go all out. What's the worst that can happen, right? The worst that can happen is that you don't make any money or someone says, no, move on to the next one, Okay. That's what you do in life, and that's what you do in business. You know, move on to the next one. Just keep moving, because there are people out there that you can do deals with, okay? And um, he, he, went, he then went through his own database, okay? And this is the thing, guys. You know, look, at, look internally at what you have access to. And he found a teddy bear manufacturer on his list. Teddy bear manufacturer. He then approached one of the largest gift suppliers in the UK with a JV proposal, Okay? And the gift supplier ordered 60,000 teddy bears in year one, and Mark picked up his fee of 45,000. And I was like, Mark, don't these gift shops have enough teddy bears? And he's like, no, dude, these are special Jamaican teddy bears. And I was like, okay, all right, dude, that's a niche. That's a niche, I like it. I like it. So that, that's what he did. So he did very well with that. Um, this, is a, this, is, this is another amazing case study. So you don't even have to come onto my program to make money. How cool is that, right? Okay, listen to this. Mark attended a, uh, a recent a seminar that I spoke at. He was in the audience like you guys. And he saw me speak on stage about joint ventures. And he comes up to me, right? At the end of my, uh, at the end of my um, uh, presentation, he comes running up to me at the end. And he goes, dude, that was an awesome presentation. I just made 10,000 quid. I was like, how the hell do you do that? He goes, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. And he, he, he runs off. And I'm like, trying to find this guy. I'm Facebooking him. And it's like, got him. So I said, look, tell me, how did you make 10,000 pounds just by watching me speak? This is what he did. Um, uh, this is what he did, okay? He was, a speaker before me was selling a 1,500 pound social media package, okay? And what happened was he was already talking to one of his clients about spending 25,000 pounds on a social media campaign. He saw this girl on stage. She's very well known. She's a very good friend of mine. She actually, right now she's speaking in, uh, I think, New Zealand. I give it away. Uh, and uh, he, he saw her speak and she was selling the exact same package for 1,500 pounds. Social media done for you package. He thought, interesting. So what he did was he approached her and uh, she was selling a 1,500 so pound social media package. He then asked her if she had a reseller package and said, can I resell that course to, to, to people? And she goes, yeah, sure you can. He got back on the phone with one of his clients and said, guess what? That 25 grand package, I can slash it. If you can make a decision right now on the phone, send me a purchase order for 10 grand, would that be okay? <laughs> yeah? They said yes. He got the order, bang on his phone. He bought her program and he resold it to them. How cool is that? He did a JV with a speaker. Absolutely phenomenal. So after speaking to him, he's now doing a JV with the same speaker. The speaker realized, damn, and now I think they're doing a 50-50 split now. So that's a really, you know, take action, guys. It's all about taking action. Yeah, spotting opportunities and taking action. If the program's not right for you, I will recommend another speaker's program for you, okay? I know all the speakers at this event, and they're all top quality speakers. They have some great programs, but I'll try and steer you in the right direction, tell you exactly what you need, okay? A lot of people come to programs, and they don't know what they need, you know? They don't know the outcome in terms of why am I here, what am I trying to get out of this program? So I even if I can't qualify you for my program, I'll sit down, and I'll tell you exactly what you need to move forward and be successful. So that's me, Sahel Khan. Thank you very much for speaking. And if you come to the back of the room, I'll be there if you want any more questions. Thank you.